What's up? Welcome back to the Good View Woodworks channel. My name is Nathan and today we are going to go over two things that most people skip when they do how-tos with epoxy. You need to stay tuned so you know exactly what to do when you start having an epoxy project. Check it out. All right guys, today in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over two things that I, that I continue to get questions about that maybe I'm not specific enough on that I and I have also seen issues in this department when people are sending me questions about their projects. So step one is to seal the edges of your work so that you don't get air bubbles, if, especially when you're doing a river table or a casting a slab. I'll show you exactly what that means. All right guys, say this is your piece of wood and the river is gonna be here. And let's say your river is gonna be right here. What you wanna do is you want to seal this edge right here so that no air bubbles can come up and then ruin your epoxy. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna just take some of this epoxy and we're just gonna brush it on. Brush it onto the edge here. If you don't seal those edges, bubbles can come out of the wood because wood is porous and it can get into your epoxy and mess up that awesome project that you have. So you don't wanna do that, all right? So I'm gonna show you the first thing that we're gonna use that we can use to seal the edges, okay? Okay, the best thing to use no matter what is use the same epoxy that you're using in your project. So if you're using Stone Coat Countertops Epoxy, what you wanna do is you wanna just mix up just a little bit of epoxy and then coat those edges. And you wanna just use a little bit and do thin coats on that edge and let it dry until it's tacky and then add another coat. Most of the time you're only gonna need one coat here, but depend if your wood is real porous like oak or, or cedar or something like that, it might take two seal coats on this edge. If you wanna seal this part, if you're doing a flood coat over the entire surface of your slab and you wanna seal this coat, use the same material, use your epoxy, but you're gonna do something really thin. You're gonna, do, you're gonna mix some epoxy and spread it really thin. Once you spread it out really thin, which I'll show you right now, Check it out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm mixing up about two ounces per square foot and I'm using my squeegee, my shower squeegee, to seal the edge, to seal the top. But I'm using really, I'm using my squeegee to make it really thin. You don't need a lot of epoxy to seal. However, you need to do three separate seal coats. So you let the first seal coat dry Come back the next day and do another one. Make sure you scuff the surface with 220 grit sandpaper before you st start the next seal coat. You can also use your hands. Okay guys, the, the second thing that I have used that has worked, but I would recommend always using the epoxy is I've used Minwax Sanding Sealer. And you can also coat the edges with this. You wanna use a foam brush and do three thin coats. Put the first coat on, let it fully dry, come back, 
put a second and third coat on. Now, this is not as good as epoxy, but it does work when you're in a pinch. If you haven't seen my other video, which I will link up right here, that's the video of the yacht table. I use the Minwax sanding sealer to seal the edges for that river. So it does work, but I always recommend using stone coat countertops or whichever epoxy you're already using. I will say, Stone Coat Countertops has a it has an epoxy called Quick Coat, and I will link that down in the description along with the Minwax Sanding Sealer, and that's what I would use if I were you to seal these edges. All right, guys, tip number two. When you guys are mixing your epoxy, if you're using casting resin, I would not recommend using a paddle on a drill to mix your epoxy. You always wanna use a stick, however, you can use a paddle, even though I would not recommend it. I use a paddle when I mix it because I take care in not in training a lot of air into the epoxy. And the way that you do that is when you put your drill, when you put your paddle into the cup, you stir it, you go around the outside, but you never want to come and have the paddle halfway out of the epoxy. You want to keep it below the surface, but that it's still mixing the stuff that's at the top. So I'll show you that in this little snippet right here of the same video. You can see that I don't let it come out of the epoxy. I just let it come near the surface so that it's still bringing the epoxy down, but I'm not entraining a lot of air. The The problem is if you get a lot of air in the epoxy, you may not be able to get it all out with a torch and it will make it look foggy. Okay, so those are my two tips, guys. They are very important. They are here to help you succeed when you create your next epoxy project. And if you would, please do me a favor. If you like this video, smash that like button. If this is your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And also share this video with a friend so that way more people can understand how to use epoxy the correct way. Also guys, don't forget to ring the bell to the right of the subscribe button so that you get notified anytime I post a new video. And with that being said, guys, thanks for hanging out with us.